Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Everyday Cody for the Everyday Guy and today we're going to be talking about the Opsman Fast 401 Weapon Mounted Light. Okay, first things first, the firearm and mag are empty and safe. So, I got early access to this guy. If you guys are wondering, locally, South Africa, um, this isn't available just yet. A very proud moment for the channel in that the guys at Torch SA sent me one to review and test to see whether or not it's something that is uh, of high enough quality to be supplied to the market. Now, straight off the bat, Let's address the elephant in the room. This is a Surefire X300 lookalike. Okay, there's absolutely no getting away from it. My thoughts on that was, first, uh, not too excited about that. Second, I thought, what if someone is able to provide a Surefire-esque light with similar levels of quality and design for a third of the price? These do not cost as much as Surefire's cost. And I thought, well, that's worth looking into. So I got myself a holster made by the guy at Southwest Holsters, and I started every day carrying this light. Now, why a weapon-mounted light? Well, there are things you can do with a weapon-mounted light that you can't do with a firearm and a handheld flashlight. For example, open a door, uh, reach for a tourniquet, uh, reach for a med pack. That sort of thing. A weapon mounted light gives you light on your firearm with a free hand if necessary. I just also want to remind you there are things you can't do with weapon mounted light that you can do with a handheld flashlight. For example, look for your keys under your car if you drop them. That sort of thing. So there's value to both. I am a weapon mounted light guy. I, I feel the advantages of having one of these outweigh the disadvantages in South Africa. Most violent crimes, housebreakings happen in low light situations. Having something that can provide you with data and take away data from a potential attacker is useful. If you want to see what that looks like, this is what it looks like looking into the business end of the Opsman Fast 401. And this is what it looks like from my point of view using the Opsman Fast 401. Stats-wise, it is a 800 lumen, 16,000 candela weapon-mounted light. It uses two CR123A batteries. It's got a maximum runtime of 1 hour and 25 minutes. Beam distance of 256 meters and a lifetime warranty. A worldwide lifetime warranty. That from what I understand means that your supplier carries a worldwide lifetime warranty on the light. Now it also has a patented toggle mechanism. Okay, that is your on off mechanism. Let me take you through this. You've got a toggle on either side of the uh, light so it is ambidextrous. A press and hold in the downward direction gives you momentary on. Let's see if we can get that nicely in shot. That's momentary on, and that is spring-loaded. So I'll press it on the other side. That is, it's a spring-loaded, uh, how do I best show this? Spring-loaded momentary on. So there's only one mode in this guy's full 800 lumen, 16,000 candela uh, mode, which I think makes sense. If you are using a weapon-mounted light, you want all the power of that weapon-mounted light, right? Because... You're not using a weapon mounted light for an administrative task. You're using it for a life threatening situation more often than not. Your handheld flashlight, that's for your administrative duties. So I like the fact that it's only got one mode, high powered mode, blind mode, sun mode, full epileptic seizure mode. That is what I want. So hold down for momentary on and that is on either side of the firearm on a spring loaded toggle. 
It does not stay, obviously it doesn't stay in momentary on, otherwise it wouldn't be momentary on. And then flick upwards for constant on. And that also is on either side. Flick upwards, constant on. Now I'm assuming the patentedness of that is the actual uh, programming behind it. Because again, this is very similar to the Surefire X300. I also don't have a problem with that. If you're going to copy someone, copy the best. Okay, uh, and if you're going to provide a survivable light that is a copy of a light, make it a copy of the internationally recognized best weapon mounted light out there. Okay, so I'm cool. I'm not stressed about names. I'm stressed about something's ability to do what it says it's going to do and something's ability to survive uh, testing. Talking about testing, obviously, what did stress me out was the mechanism by which you put this onto your firearm so it's got a locking screw right there now you'll see i made a silver line through the whole thing right that is so that when i tested it um and when i use it and when i carry it i want to know whether or not this thing is unraveling itself and that's that silver line you see going through there so the 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 locking screw has stayed in place i would however recommend just for peace of mind get like a bit of loctite stick it in there and then tighten it down but for testing purposes as you know i test things as they come out of the box and it doesn't come with loctite so i don't test with loctite now drop testing this drop test serves as an impact test as well i wanted to drop the firearm or a training firearm with a light on it so that it hits on the front bezel of the light two reasons one i wanted to see if it was survivable and two i wanted to see if that impact would cause the little screw mechanism to unscrew itself so let's have a look at that Okay, happy days. So it didn't unscrew itself, it did its job and it stayed in place. And as you can see, um, the light is survivable. Now, in terms of recoil testing, you saw on the bit on the intro I did, I've got I've got a few hundred rounds, it's less than a thousand, it's more than three hundred. I'm not like after three hundred I just stopped losing count because I don't know. Um, so I've got a few hundred rounds through the light of EDC it for a little over a month now. I've got well over a few thousand draw strokes through it, as you can you can probably see uh, paints like begin to come off. I don't know if you can see there's some red on there because the holster I got for it has a red back. I'll show you that in a second and we'll talk about holsters for these kind of lights in a second. Now, what do you get in the package? You get a very surefire looking package. For those of you who don't know, this is a light made from Opsman. Opsman are the same guys who make ear more electronic hearing protectors. So they, they are reputable in the industry and maybe they're trying to branch out into another field. Um, they definitely have a company that, that has resources, I'll put it that way. In the box, you get this plastic box, which looks very surefire-esque. You get a extra mount. Can you see that? Let's just open that. That right there is your 1913 mount. And you get a brief explanation about what is what. All in all, box doesn't really matter to me. So in all these videos, I've got to explain why weapon mounted light. And like I said earlier, a weapon mounted light gives you more options than having to have a handheld flash out and shooting your, your firearm with one hand. Something I do want to remind you of is if you're going to run a weapon mounted light, remember, if you're running a light in a dot, you've got to be able to see your dot with your light on. Okay, it makes no uh, sense if when you flick that switch and your light goes boom, all of a sudden your primary targeting system goes AWOL. Okay, 
So I'm running the Sightmark Minishot M spec. Um, well over 2,000 rounds through this guy, done all kinds of uh, ridiculous tests to it, so I'm comfortable to run uh, the new model M-Spec. And then obviously guys, you're not going to be able to really get the full function out of a light like this if you don't have a good holster. Now, the guys at Southwest Holsters make a brilliant holster for this setup. This is one of the Rattlers. Um, probably one of the best holsters I've got my hands on even in the line of Southwest holsters. Uh, this is this is like not just my favorite holster but my favorite Southwest holster. holster. Um, when running things like this you've got to be able to run, you've got to be able to kneel down, you've got to be able to take shots, got to be able to access your firearm while in motion. Those of you um, who watched my video last week on the best use of trans ammunition will remember that little skit, that little joke I did um, with like the ridiculous drill. I was like rolling around on the ground, falling over, that sort of thing. That was all done with the Southwest Holsters Rattler for the Opsman Fast 401. Also, on that sly side note, the Fast 401 has the coolest name of any weapon mounted light on the market. The Fast 401. I don't know what it stands for, but in terms of name coolness, it's right up there. Now, one of the things people are going to ask me when I talk about something and I use the word surefire in the name is, do I recommend the Fast 401 for duty use? People have asked me, people have seen this because it looks so much like the surefire and the surefire is basically the staple, staple of duty use weapon mounted lights. The answer to that is, guys, I'm not a policeman uh, and I'm not active military, so I can't recommend something for that. Uh, in my younger days, I did, believe it or not, try to join the South African Police Service, but due to certain um, governmental demographic requirements, that wasn't a possibility. Do I recommend it for duty use? Unfortunately, I can't answer that question because I don't know what a duty military or duty law enforcement officer goes through on a daily basis. Can I recommend it for everyday carry? In that regard, yes, I can. Um, this light has done everything all the other lights that I have have done for me, be it O-Light, uh, Trust Fire, whatever other lights I've got. Um, I've got pretty much every single O-Light. I've run pretty much every single O-Light. And it doesn't perform any worse or any better than what the O-Lights perform. It goes on when I press the down toggle for momentary. And when I flick the up toggle, it works as well. Now, onto the switches. Okay, they are these flick toggle switches and a lot of people go for this on the shore fires what's the best shot here on the shore fires because they like the toggle right they like the control of a toggle so i get that and one of the important things on these lights is you want ease of control like if you need to use gloves you want that control uh, on the switches that you can use gloves uh, comfortably and confidently. You also want ease and really simple tactile control. So just side note, I never activate a light with my trigger finger unless I'm one-handed manipulating it. Okay, I've got two hands on the light. What I'm either doing is, let's get this best focus. What I'm either doing is weak hand thumb or I would either flick it up or just flick my hand upwards and that would activate constant on it's like an up and forward motion and i've done that many times so that is how i would use a weapon mounted light if i have two hands and i do it the same way if i was wearing gloves and i think that is why people like the the surefire the control mechanism is really uh, intuitive really easy with button presses right often you have to press for momentary release and then press again for constant with this you've got super fast momentary control and very fast constant control right it's less of a button and it's more of a gross motor function that you can build in tapping little buttons in the heat of combat or in a high stress situation becomes very difficult simply flicking your hand forward it becomes very easy especially if you're wearing gloves right because sometimes through the finger of a glove you can't get that perfect tactility on a little button press. So I do like the toggles. Opsman actually asked me what my thoughts are. The only thing I would say is, how close can I get this? There's a little gap between 
the trigger guard and the back of the light. Opsman, if you can make that so that the, the back of the light sits flush against the trigger guard, it'll give more surface area for normal size handed people to be able to activate the, the switch if they're going to use their, their trigger finger, right? And I think it'll just also give you more mechanical strength because now you're getting strength off the um, trigger guard as well as your locking screw. James at Southwest Alsace can make you one of these. You will have to send him your light, right? It is not going to be a cheap Alsace. I just want to put that out there. Um, he, he's probably going to hate me for saying this because this is the this is this is a one of one setup, right? There in the whole country, I'm the only one to have this light, and I'm the only one to have a holster for the setup. But I can tell you that this is definitely a functional, comfortable holster to run. It's actually become my holster of choice. I'm glad this light is available because this is my, my current and probably going to be my EDC until I get the Surefire X300 because I think that's probably the only step up from, from the Opsman Fast 401. I'm fairly comfortable, say, from an everyday carry purpose, the Opsman Fast 401 is definitely a survivable, usable weapon-mounted light that gives you the convenience and shall I, am I going to use the word tactical, the tactical advantage of really dumb switches. Tactical things in the EDC world is to make something as simple as possible for the highest possible result and this definitely does that. So that's my thoughts on the Opsman Fast 401. I don't think they are available just yet. I think after this review they might become available. Speak to James from Southwest Holsters before ordering yourself one just to make sure that he will make you a holster. The Opsman Fast 401 is probably going to be my EDC flashlight as well. Or my EDC weapon mounted light, excuse me. Until I can get my hands on a Surefire x -Land. The thing with Surefire in South Africa is they just, they are hard to get hold of and they are ridiculously expensive. I do acknowledge that they are the industry leaders and therefore um, they've earned the right to charge that amount. I've got no problem with that. But you do also have to sometimes, uh, from my point of view, remember my channel is for the everyday guy. Not a lot of us have five, six thousand rand to drop on a weapon mounted light. If we can get surefire levels of lumens, uh, candela, and survivability and reliability from something a third of the price, uh, then it is, I consider my responsibility to bring that to your attention. So far, the Opsman Fast 401 is exactly that. Now, when they do make them available in South Africa, you guys are more than welcome to contact me and say, hey, Ran, you know, is your light still running well? And I'll be super honest about it. But as of about a month and a half of testing it and beating it up and, you know, doing everything I've done with it, um, shooting it more importantly, remember, these lights have to survive being shot with. That's their main, they've got to survive the recoil of a, of a handgun. That's their main function. If they can do that, you know, 90% of the battle is won uh, for EDCers like us. So guys, that is a thank you to Henry Beeman and Torch SA for giving me the opportunity to test the light before um, it's available and to give my verdict on it prior to it being released. I really appreciate that. The 401 seems to be a really good quality light and, and built for uh, the guy who might not be able to afford uh, something like the Surefire X300. I will see you guys soon for another review. Have a good week, guys. Cheers. God bless.